Everybody's excited to be here this morning? Good, me too, me too. Um, how many of you guys know that like next Sunday is Easter? Isn't that amazing? Like, I'm, I'm telling you, Sunday is like Super Bowl for us Christians, right? We get super excited. Uh, it's, it's Resurrection Sunday. It is the Sunday that we get to remember. And honestly, we should be remembering this and thinking about it like every day how much God loves us and what he did with his son Jesus when he died on a cross for me, right, for you. And But it, there is something really cool about just the Easter season and, and just thinking about it. Like this week, I know, I know I'm, I'm like going to try to at least watch The Passion of the Christ. Have any of you guys ever seen that? I love that, man. It's an intense movie, but it shows what God was willing to do to save me, to save you. Just think about that. There's no greater love than this, the Bible says, than to lay down your life for someone, right? For a friend. How many of you guys know, like if someone laid down their life, if they, someone was gonna like shoot you or something, something and someone pushed you out of the way and then they took the bullet for you, you'd be like, man, you love me a lot. That's what Jesus did. You guys realize that? That's how much he loves you. And so that's what we're gonna celebrate is death, burial, and a resurrection next Sunday, right? So I'm super excited. And actually today, do you know what today is? Today is Palm Sunday. Today is the very first day that starts Holy Week. Did you know that? Today is the day that Jesus actually, we're going to talk about it today. Today is the day that Jesus actually rode into Jerusalem to finish it. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, on today that we're celebrating. He rode in on a donkey. And, and do you have those things? This is why they're called Palm Sunday. You like these? These are real palm. Thank you, Justin. Hosanna. Praise God. Thank you. Give it up for Justin, you guys. So these are palm branches, right? And I actually, uh, my wife and I are cousins. These, these are from uh, their house. I saw that they had a palm bush tree thing, and I was like, hey, can I cut some of those for Sunday? I'm going to be preaching on Palm Sunday. So these are palm branches, right? And so back in the day, what they did was, if you saw a king, say there was a king getting ready to walk down these steps, what would you put out for him? A red what? carpet. Well, back then they didn't have red carpets, right? They had palm branches. And so when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, they were waving Hosanna, Hosanna. And then they were taking these palm branches and they were putting them down by his feet. They were putting them down and they were making a way to where he could actually ride on the donkey. And do you know what Hosanna means? It says, save now or save us, right? And so the whole Jerusalem Jesus, on the start of Holy Week, as he's coming into Jerusalem, people are screaming, save us, save us, because they knew the prophecy, there's a prophecy, that your king is going to come, we're going to read it here in a second, he's going to come riding in on a donkey, and you know that he's going to bring peace and victory, right? And do you know, someone told me this, they checked online too, and so you know it's probably true if it's online, uh, they said that, that palm branches, they actually are a symbol for peace, they're a symbol for victory, and they're a symbol of eternity, Right? And how many of you guys know Jesus riding into Jerusalem was getting ready to bring peace, right? He was proclaiming victory, but he was also paving a way for eternal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to pray and then we're going to tie in all this stuff. We're going to talk about Palm Sunday, why palm, the palms, why Jesus coming into Jerusalem was important, and why the donkey is important. I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to preach about a donkey today. You don't get to do that that often, so I, I'm going to do it today. And uh, with the Lord's help, uh, we're going to get something out of it. Amen. So let's pray. Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are here. God, that your spirit, your presence is here. Jesus, we honor you. We lift you up today. And we just remember, Jesus, Palm Sunday, why you came, what it was all about. God, open up our mind, open up our hearts to you, Jesus. Speak to us, Lord, in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go right into it. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 21. 1 through 11. This is a lot, so I'm going to read it real fast. You don't have to like follow along with me, but I'm just going to read it, okay? It says, as Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem, they came to a town called Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead of him, and he said, listen, go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there, and with it, it's colt. What a colt is, if you know anything about donkeys or horses, all a colt is is a male horse or a male donkey that hasn't been neutered yet, okay? And so he goes, listen, when you go into this 
town, you're going to find a donkey with its colt, right? And then what does he say? He says, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks you what you were doing, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. Don't try that, okay? Unless Jesus tells you, because someone will be like, you're stealing my donkey. So don't do that. But so they're like, all right, so this took, listen, this took place. The reason why all this is happening is it took place to fulfill the prophecy that is said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble. He is riding a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. So the two disciples did as Jesus commanded, right? They brought the donkey and the colt to him. They threw their garments over the cloak and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread out their garments on the road and uh, ahead of him, and they cut the branches and the trees, and they spread it out on the road. Jesus was in the middle, the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Hosanna. They were shouting things like, praise be to God, the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heavens. The entire city was in an uproar as he entered. And some people were even saying things like this. Who is this? What's going on? And they were saying like, oh, it's Jesus. Some people were like, oh, that's, that's that prophet of Nazareth. Some of them are probably saying like, oh, you know, that's that guy who raises people from the dead. That's that guy who's friend of sinners. He hangs out with the prostitutes. He hangs out with the tax. That's the guy, man, who has so much wisdom. And some people are going, no, that's the Messiah. That's the king. And I, I read about this. I read about this prophecy from Zechariah, right? And so they were freaking out because the king was coming into Jerusalem, right? The king was riding in on a donkey. And real quick, before we go any further, I just want to tell you how much of a miracle this was that Jesus rode this donkey. You ready for this? How many of you guys have livestock? Does anyone have livestock horses? I know, yep, you got baptized because you had, last service I said that and like barely anyone, I'm like, duh, we're in Stockton. Who has horses and who has cows? But one person did. I don't know if the, uh, the Stockton code allows that. But anyways, but this is what I wanna say. Check this out. If you know anything about horses, about donkeys, about goats, about anything like that, can I tell you something right now? The Bible says that this donkey, this baby, this young colt was still with his mom. What does that mean? Who can tell me? If you see a livestock that's still next to its mom, you want to know what that means? That means that that animal is not yet weaned. Do you know, okay, listen, do you know I, I have goats? We just got baby goats, like, because we live out in the country, Manteca, and we have this little area, right? And so we got goats, and we got bottle-fed goats. Do you know what that means? That means that they are not with their mom. Humans are feeding it. So guess what? They love humans. They're like, you can walk out there, they'll run to you because they think they're, that, that you're gonna feed them, right? But now Jesus goes to a donkey, a young donkey that is still with his mom. Do you know if you, that usually those babies are so skittish, they do not wanna be by humans. So Jesus, he sits there, he gets a donkey that's not yet weaned. It's a colt. That means it hasn't been fixed yet or it hasn't been neutered yet. Do you know if, when you neuter a male animal, it usually calms it down? Did you know that? And so check this out. It's not neutered. It's not weaned. And the Bible says, you ready for this? It says it has never been ridden. This donkey, how many of you guys have ever been to a rodeo? Anyone ever been to a rodeo, right? It should have been Jesus riding into donkey rodeo in Jerusalem that morning, right? But no, but Jesus comes and not to mention it says that there was a huge crowd. The whole Jerusalem was in an uproar and all of a sudden people are doing this to the donkey. As Jesus is riding in, that donkey should have been freaking out. He's away from his mom. He's not neutered, right? He's never been ridden and people are screaming Hosanna. But Jesus, what did Jesus do? All of a sudden he sits on the donkey and he rides through the town in peace, bringing peace. Can I tell you something? When I was reading this, I was like, God, what does this mean? Like, why are you so, you're talking about the cult. You're talking about all this stuff, right? It's never been written. Why did you put that in your word? And I totally thought about this. Some of us can be as wild as a donkey. Some of you, I'm not gonna say you, I'll just say me. Some of us can be as stubborn as a donkey. Some of us can sit there and go like, you know what, Jesus, you can never change me. You can never transform me. I'm so addicted to drugs. Jesus, you can't touch me and change me. 
God, my marriage is so screwed up. There's no way Jesus can touch my marriage and transform my marriage and do a miracle. My kids, right? I'm so addicted to pornography, right? You can say all these different things, but can I tell you, all it takes is, and it's not cliche, it's true. All it takes is one touch of Jesus and he can transform me. If he could transform a donkey, right, and, and that quick, believe me, he could transform human beings. And, and I'm not just saying it to say it. I'm, I'm saying it from experience. Jesus has transformed my life. He has transformed me and my addictions, right? But here's the thing. Some of you, when you see Jesus coming, you're all like, nope. I'm just, I, I, I like my pornography. Nope, I like my party and drinking with my friends. Nope, I like my hurt. I like my pain. I like my unforgiveness. And you, instead of letting Jesus or his disciples or his church or a pastor on a mic come and try to untie you and bring you to him, you're like, nah, I don't really want to. Do you know how many people didn't come to church today because they just, ah, I don't want to. Either the devil's lying to them or they like sitting in their sin and in their darkness. But if they could come, or if they would just, if you would just listen to the people that are preaching to you, that are disciples trying to bring you to Jesus, Jesus can transform you. And he can use you. How many of you guys know Jesus used that donkey, right? Jesus doesn't want to just use donkeys. He wants to use you and me. Amen? You got to let him do it, though. You got to let him touch you and transform you. He loves you. He's powerful. He's the same Jesus today. Amen? And speaking of donkeys, Pastor James already said it. We have donkeys out there, isn't that so? We have real donkeys on Palm Sunday. So after service, if you want to see them, go out by the gate. I encourage you, don't run in there to the kids because the security might tackle you because they're like, are you their parent, right? And so, but just wait. And maybe after all the kids are gone, maybe you could go in there and put it on your Instagram. Take a picture with a donkey. Now, real quick, I want to tell you this. Something really cool about a donkey. Are you ready for this? I love facts. I'm like, I'm like a dad, right? I, I love those like dad jokes and dad facts, okay? You can ask my wife. Now listen, do you know that a donkey, donkeys are the only animal in the world that have crosses actually on their back, on their hair? Did you know that? Can we have that picture? Can we put the pictures up there? Do you know donkeys are the only animal that have an actual cross, crosses on their back? Isn't that crazy? And people don't understand why. They don't, but I know why, right? Because Jesus, on the start of Holy Week, as he was getting ready to declare peace to the world, he rode in on a donkey to die on a cross and to set us all free. Amen, the king. I'm telling you, people, I was reading about it. I was like, I want to make sure there's no other animal. And online it said there's no other animal that has this. It's just, it's, it's crazy, but we know why, amen? Even those donkeys back there, they're like a really dark chocolate color, but if you look really close, you'll actually see the lines coming down right where Jesus would have sat. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, number one, real quick. When Jesus came in on Palm Sunday, he fulfilled prophecy. If you're taking notes, when Jesus rode in on the donkey, he fulfilled prophecy. So the prophecy, it comes from Zechariah chapter nine, verses nine through 12. And let me tell you this, Jesus, when he rode in on this donkey, this prophecy was 500 years before Jesus was even born. You know that? 500 years. So let's read it. Listen to how cool this is. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, actually on a colt. The full of a donkey. Remember, 500 years before it even happened. And then God says this, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, the horse from Jerusalem. The bow will be broken. So what is God saying here? God's saying, listen, when I send my king, he's not coming to wage war. He's not coming, right, on a horse or on a chariot or with a bow or with a sword. He's coming on a donkey. He's coming not to wage war. He's coming to proclaim peace. Isn't that cool? Then it goes on and says this, and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion will extend from sea to sea, from the Euphrates all the way until the ends of the earth. Now listen what God's saying here. And he goes, listen, when my king comes, he's going to declare peace. And where's it going to start? It's going to start in the Middle East. It's going to start next to the Euphrates in Jerusalem, and it's going to spread out to the whole world. And what does he do? How does he do it? He's going to do it because of the blood of my covenant. I will rescue and release the prisoners from the waterless pit. 
So what is God saying in here? And he goes, the king's coming. He's going to come to Jerusalem. He's going to come on a donkey. He's going to come, right, and proclaim peace to the nation, right? He's all these different things. And then it says this, listen. He says, and how is he going to do it? He's going to do it with blood. That's why I believe the donkey had a cross on his back, right? He's going to do it with its blood. And what does the blood do? The blood rescues people from the waterless pit. What is the waterless pit? Is there any water in hell? No, right? And what did Jesus say? Just to prove it, Jesus even said this in in one of his parables and stuff. He said, listen, there was a beggar named Lazarus and he died and went to heaven. Do you guys remember this story? And he goes, but there was a rich man that didn't care about God, wasn't kind to the poor, didn't care about, all he cared about was this life and he ended up going to hell. And what did, what did, what did that, uh, that rich man do? When he was in hell, he was so thirsty because there was no water. He looked up and he saw Lazarus in heaven and he said, Lazarus, and he told the angel, can you just tell Lazarus to dip his finger in some cool water just so that he could drip it down into my mouth? And even the angel didn't let him do that. But can I tell you something? That Jesus came so that you and I, if we listen to him and if we accept his peace, and if we accept his blood, what he did on the cross, he will rescue you from the waterless pit called hell. Amen? And here's the encouragement. And this is a prophecy. This is a prophecy 500 years. I keep on telling you guys that so you guys get it. 500 years before Jesus came. Then it says, so right now is the time to return from your stronghold. Oh, all you prisoners of hope, even today I declare that you will be restored. God's saying, I will restore you even double. So right now, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day, if you're running from God, if you're heading to hell, if you're not serving Jesus, if you don't believe in Jesus, if you haven't accepted him as your Lord, and I'm not talking about just being Christian and coming to church. I'm talking about you don't know God. You don't have a relationship with him. You're not praying with him. If you, if that's you, if you're on your way to hell, today is the day that you need to get out and come to hope. Come to Jesus, the peace. Amen. Real quick, Jesus, uh, there's so many prophecies. I can't even say them all, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to tell you guys a few of them. Messianic prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. You ready for this? It said that the Messiah would come and he'd be born of a virgin. Jesus did that, right? Said that he would be born in Bethlehem. He did that. Yeah, listen, I was born in French Camp, California, a county, right over here, right? I could not tell my mom and dad, hey, listen, I want to be born in French Camp, California, right? A county. I couldn't do that, right? Jesus couldn't do that. But check this out. Because he is God and because he is a true Messiah, he didn't do that. His mom and dad weren't even from Bethlehem. They were from over in Galilee, over in that region. And because Caesar Augustus issued a decree that they had to go and do a census, so they had to go all the way there. And then she gives birth in Bethlehem, fulfilling a prophecy. Crazy. But then they go back to Galilee. It said another prophetic word was that he'd be called a Galilean. Then they ended up moving to Nazareth. Another prophetic word that he'd be called a Nazarene. Are you guys getting this? Jesus really is the true Messiah. Amen. And it goes on and on and on. It said that he would die, that he would resurrect, that many people would reject him, yet many people will actually accept him, right? It even says that many of the Jews would reject their own Messiah, even though he was right there. The ones that they were reading about, they didn't even notice that it was him, right? All these things. Listen to Psalm 22. We can read this one together. This is King David giving a prophetic word through the Holy Spirit about his great, 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 great grandson, right? Oh, here's another thing. Prophetic word was that Jesus or the Messiah would come from the Jews, that he'd come from the line of David, right? That he'd be called the son of David, that out of the 12 tribes, he'd come from the Judean tribe, right? And all these things came to place. Now listen to what King David says. This is when Jesus is dying on the cross. King David is is prophesying about this. My strength is dried up like some blake baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. This is Jesus on the cross. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hands and feet. Wow. I can count all the bones of my body. My enemies stare at me and they gloat. They have divided their garments amongst my garments amongst themselves and they throw dice for my clothing. Do you guys remember when the Romans officers, they did that, right? The Roman soldiers. Isn't that crazy? And listen, do you want to hear another one? Another one about the crucifixion? Do you know there is a prophecy that one of the prophets prophesied that not one bone of the Messiah's in his body would be broken? Did you know that? Do you know how amazing of a miracle this is? Because do you realize when people were crucified, you can look this up, when Romans crucified people, 
They would put the nails in their feet, right, and put them in their wrists. And sometimes they would live for a while. You want to know why? Because what they would do was they would push on the nails. It's kind of graphic. They would push on the nail on their feet in pain, and they would do it so that they could breathe. And they'd go, (gasps) but then they'd sit back down in pain. And so what the Roman officers would do was they would get big sludge hammers, this is graphic, and they would come and they would break the legs of the people that they were crucifying so they would fall and so that they couldn't get oxygen, so they couldn't push up anymore. Do you realize that as they were getting ready to do that, as they did that to the other people that were being crucified on Jesus' side, when they came up to him, Jesus, he already gave his last breath and he said, uh, it is finished. And he died, and that fulfilled the prophecy that not one bone in his body would be broken. Isn't that cool? So what did they do? Who knows? What does the Bible say? What did they do instead? They pierced his side, and and, uh, the, the, not sword, but the spear went up into his heart, right? And blood and water flowed. All these things, can you guys just thank God that we honestly, we serve the true Messiah. Don't doubt it. Amen? Don't let the devil lie to you. Now listen, this is what I want to say very important is all of these prophecies about Jesus came true. That where the Messiah would be born, what he would do, what he would teach, uh, said that he would die, that he would resurrect, all these things. Do you know the only prophecies that haven't come true about Jesus are the ones about him coming back? I'm going to say it again. The only prophecies that haven't come true yet are the ones about him returning. And can I tell you something? He came in on a donkey, but he is going to return on a horse. And listen, check this out. The second time when he returns, he's not going to be declaring peace, because right now we're in the time of peace. He's going to be declaring a time of victory and a time of conquering, and he's going to get rid of the devil, hell, sin, and guess what? Sinners. People that have not accepted him, that have not accepted his invitation. So right now, it's very important for all of us. You need to accept him. I accepted him years ago, and I said, you know what, Jesus, I am a sinner. So I don't care who you are, you can come to him right now, amen? But today's the day of salvation, don't wait. You can die, and I'm not trying to use fear tactics, this is the truth. We know a lot of people that died from COVID, right? We know people that have gotten in car accidents, that had a stroke, right? So right now, if you're not right with God, hear me. And it's not even me, it's Jesus speaking through me. If you have not given your life to Jesus, a Savior who loves you, you need to do it today, amen? Amen, that leads me into my second point. Um, and also, real quick, I, I do want to share this. A couple of weeks ago, Jaden, my brother-in-law, he was preaching, and he preached about the 10 uh, bridesmaids or the 10 virgins, right? Five of them were foolish, and they, they just, they weren't thinking, they weren't thinking about the relationship with the Lord, right? And five of them were wise, and they kept the oil burning, so when Jesus came back, they were ready. But can I tell you, there were many people that weren't ready in Jerusalem when he, he rode in on the donkey. It's going to be the same thing. When he comes back the second time, many people aren't going to be ready. And even believers, that's a wake-up call. You might not be saved today, you can be ready, but check this out. You might have been saved years ago, but you might have fallen asleep. Or you might be playing games in your relationship with Jesus. And you don't, you're not close to him anymore. I, me personally, I'm going to tell you guys something that I, I personally have to constantly do. Jesus, I constantly have to get alone with him and go, God, man, I'm, I'm close with you. God, I'm, I'm reading, I'm praying, and it's not by works, but check this out. How many of you guys know, just like in a marriage with my wife, if I never talk to her, it's not works. It's not like, oh, man, I've been, right? It's not like we're going to not be married. But I'll tell you what, if we don't talk, we don't spend time together, that relationship's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And that's when the devil has a way to come in with a foothold, right? Same thing with your relationship with Jesus. Don't wander away from the shepherd. Yeah. Don't wander away from the one who lives. Don't lose your first love. That has been a word every service over and over the past two services. It was the same word. I'm telling you, I believe this is a word from the Lord. Don't lose your first love. Don't lose him. He loves you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, second thing is on Palm Sunday, Jesus came to declare peace and not judgment. I kind of already talked about that. Listen, I want to tell you, the Bible says that Jesus is the lamb, but he's also what? The lion. Right? Amen? Listen, the Bible says that God is both kind and he's severe. Right? Listen, he rode in on a donkey, but he's coming back on a war horse. And so listen, right now, this is the season, just so you guys know, this is the season of peace. This is the season of Jesus being the lamb. So right now, anyone could come to Jesus. I don't care what you've done. I don't care anything. Whatever you've done, right? Right now is the time for you to come to him because he's the lamb. But when he comes back, it's going to be game over. He's coming back as a lion. 
So right now, don't waste your time, amen? Today, the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. I feel like it's the year, I don't want to say the year, what is, what is the thing they say? It's the year of this, it's the year of that, I don't believe in that stuff. But if, if, it, if I did believe in it, it'd be the year of the donkey, or it'd be the, the years of the donkey, because right now is a time of peace. I love this verse in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says this, the Lord isn't being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake because he does not want anyone to be destroyed when he comes back as a lion, when he comes back on a horse, right? No, he wants everyone to repent. So again, can you hear what the Lord's saying today? He's saying, come to me, come to me, right? He's, he's full of peace right now. Do, do not wait. Today's the day of salvation. And then lastly, this leads to my last point is on Palm Sunday, Jesus came for the lost and the hurting. On Palm Sunday, Jesus came for the lost and the hurting. Listen, I want you guys to imagine yourself. I want you guys to imagine yourself at Jerusalem that day. Can you imagine if Jesus, the king of the world, if he came in on a white horse, on a tall white horse, and if Jesus, imagine if he had his crown on, which he could have because he's the king of the world. Imagine if he had his crown on, if he had his armor on, if he had a bunch of angels or soldiers around him, if he had a big sword, right, and he was on a horse, guess what? Do you know what that says? Do you think you just run up to him? Oh, hey, King Jesus. Do you know how intimidating? How many of you guys have ever even been by a horse? I'm not just talking about King Jesus, right, on all of his kingliness. How many of you guys have ever been by a Horses can be scary. They're like, right? I'm like, and the, the way that they breathe, and they're just, they're intimidating. Can you imagine seeing Jesus coming like that? But no, he didn't. What does the Bible said? It said he came humble, he came low, riding on a donkey. Riding on a, do you realize that if you read even further into the story in Matthew, it says that that day even children were running around Jerusalem. It makes me want to cry singing, singing praise to God in the highest and blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Do you know no king, no king, excuse me, no kid would try to run up to a king on a horse, but they might want to run up to Jesus smiling, humble, right? Hanging out with his disciples, saying, come to me. And it reminds me of this, listen to this. In, uh, where is it at? In Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, Jesus actually said this. He said, come to me. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burden, or carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So I wanna tell you this, is that, and it's not fake, it's not cliche. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you were a prostitute. I don't care if you are struggling with sin. I don't care if you're into drugs. I don't care if you're into homosexuality. I don't care what you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're, even back then, do you know that they looked down at, at the prostitutes? They looked down at tax collectors. They even looked down at women back then. Do you know that? In Bible times, they looked down at women, and they even would look down at little kids. Not that important, but do you know Jesus? He said, come to me all. Come to me. I don't care what. I don't care what part of society. I don't care if you're an outcast. I don't care. He actually got mad at his disciples. He goes, let the kids come to me. Let them come to me. Because guess what? I'm humble. This is a time of peace. I love you. I want to rescue you. I want to give you a new life. So if you're in sin, if you feel, feel far away from God, I don't care if you feel like the worst sinner in the world. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that God's mad at you and he's standing far. God wants you to come to him right now because today's the day of salvation. Jesus is declaring peace. And guess what? When you come to him, he wants to love on you. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free and he wants to transform you. You know that. Jesus wants to take you out of darkness and put you into light. That's what he's doing right now. That's the time that we live in. But listen, again, what did Peter say? God's being patient. He wants everyone to come to him, but there's coming a day when you're going to hear the sound, the siren, siren. you're going to hear the trumpet blast, and Jesus is going to come down, and he is going to be in his kingly stuff, and he's going to go, it's too late. And it says that many people, if we can call out the worship team, it says that many people, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth on that day. And do you know what gnashing of teeth means? It means you're frustrated. You're frustrated. Yeah. I should have taken it seriously. I should have taken it when Jesus was saying, come to me. When he was being, man, open with open arms. But he's also a judge. He's kind and he's severe, right? He's the lamb, but he's also the lion. He came in on a donkey, but he's coming back as a horse. So right now, come to him, amen? He loves you. He does not want to punish you. But he's also just and he's perfect. 
And he is a judge, and he will have to one day. Amen? But he doesn't want to. He wants to do it to the devil and his demons. So, last verse I'm going to say, if we can all stand, is Philippians 2, 6. Listen to this. I love this verse. Though he was God, listen to our Savior right now. Listen to the love that he was willing to do for us. Though he was God, he did not think equally with God as something to cling on to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took on the humble position of a slave. And he was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and he died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and he gave him the name above every other name. At that name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue under the earth, right? And every tongue will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. To glory to God, our Father. Think about this. God loves us so much to where he doesn't want you to be scared of him. And to where he gave up his divine privileges and he could have been born in a palace, but where was he born? In a manger. Think about that. And he wants to get on our level and he goes, I'm here. I'm here for you. Come here, I love you. I want to heal you. Come on, do it. I take off my crown so that you don't have to be scared. But check it out. One day, he's going to put that crown back on and every knee is going to bow. So right now, if you haven't been bowing to Jesus, if you haven't told him, thank you. I love you. I believe. I accept your good news. Today would be a great day to do it. I couldn't think of a better day to give your life to Jesus, right? What did, what did they say on uh, uh, Palm Sunday? They said, Hosanna, and Hosanna means save us. Some of you today, if you're not saved, you need to be saying that. Save me, Jesus. And you know what he's going to say back to you? I already did. 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, I got on that cross. I made a way to give you peace, to give you life, to give you eternity. And so believe in it and confess it. Amen. So if we can all bow our heads and close our eyes, if we can invite up the, the prayer team, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. If you're here and you have never given your life to the Lord, the Messiah, the humble King, the one who's telling you, come to me, all you who are hurting, all you who are full of sin. And by the way, we have all fallen short. We've all fallen into sin. Every single one of us need Jesus, the Lamb. If that's you and if you've never accepted what Jesus did on the cross, he died to take away your sin, your shame, and to take on your punishment. He died to take your death. If you've never done that, just tell him today. Tell him to say, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Jesus, I, I want to be excited about you. I want to accept what you did. That's the good news. That's the gospel. God, make me into a new creation. Make me your son and daughter today. Take away all that junk. Take me out of the kingdom of darkness. Put me in the light. And if you guys do that, it's Jesus promises he's faithful and just, the Bible says, to forgive you of your sin and not just forgive you, but to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And he promises to make you a son or a daughter today. He promises to have a relationship with you today. If that's you, and if you want to do that, tell him right now in your own words. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. And then the next thing I wanted to pray is maybe you're like the Pharisee. All of us, we need to be careful not to, uh, if you've been a Christian for a while, you need to be careful not to become a Pharisee. The Pharisees in the Bible on that day on Palm Sunday, they, they knew the story. They knew that their king was supposed to come, but they weren't ready for him. They got so caught up in being religious and just going to church and doing all this stuff to where they didn't even have a real relationship with God. Even though they went to church, even though they had a cute bumper sticker, that little, the little fish on the end, right? But deep down inside, they didn't have that real relationship. If that's you, if you have lost your first love, if you are, do not have a real relationship with God or it's grown cold, you need to repent today. You need to repent today. I've done it before, you guys. I've go, God, forgive me. I've screwed up. I've been, I've been just going through the motions. God, I want to love you again. Tell him right now. I'm going to give you a moment. Tell him. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I want to love you. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Rededicate your life. Amen. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to be like those little kids that were so excited on Palm Sunday because their Savior was there. They were so excited because of the King and they were thankful. Now, the last thing I want to do is can we just tell them 
all as a church and as a body. Can we just tell Jesus thank you for what he's done? Let's be thankful. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your peace, your love, your good news. Thank you for dying on that cross. We're excited, Jesus. And help us, Father God, to continue to worship you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.